Marieta, thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video, I want to give you my tips how to self-publish your book professionally without publisher like I did with my book Love is the Law. Coming up. All right, so my first tip really is to find your team, your dream team that is going to help you in this publishing process because it's very hard for you just personally to self-publish your book unless you are professional editor, professional typesetter, professional book cover designer and so on. So I highly recommend to start with hiring a team, start looking for your team because you're gonna need team of people. Like I said, you're gonna need professional book cover designer, you're gonna need editor, you're gonna need type setter to basically lay out the manuscript so it looks beautiful inside of the book and you also gonna need um, possibly marketing team or people who will help you with social media pre-launch campaign launch campaign and so on so start looking for your team and by the way if you want to dig deeper if you want to learn more information how to find your team and so on you want to join my webinar free webinar training on how to professionally self-publish book in 2020 that I'm launching and the link is below this video so you can sign up. The next tip is going to be create a timeline, a realistic timeline. It took me about six months to put this baby together and honestly when I say six months I don't mean to write the manuscript. I was actually writing this book for over five years, it took me five years, doesn't mean it's gonna take you five years, don't judge me. Uh, it was a long process, personal journey of mine and uh, besides that, it took me about six months to produce this book and launch this book. So really set a realistic timeline and add extra time because on the way, trust me, things happen. Things that you don't predict will happen, especially if you want to publish professional book. You don't want to just put the book out there with a bunch of mistakes, errors, and then you want to regret, oh my God, somebody already saw this manuscript and I had a mistake and so on. Things happen on the way. So predict that this is going to happen and so you want to have extra time for you to fix what needs to be fixed and then launch. All right, so the timeline is tip number two. Tip number three is to invest in quality. And what do I mean by this is invest into quality when it comes to editing, hire a professional editor. For me, I had five different editors. I know it sounds crazy, but it is because I am not English, um, English, English native, native speaker. So I had to um, hire um, five different editors because honestly, first I hire people who were not that good. And so I wasted time and I wasted money because I was not willing to invest into I mean, not that I didn't want to invest into professional, I did, I actually did invest into professional, but before you actually hire someone, you want to really read um, or do research, do diligence, check out their previous work and check out the recommendations because honestly, there are all kinds of people out there who are claiming to be editors and they are not. <laughs> Trust me, again, speaking from my experience, you want to invest into professional, someone who is doing it for a living, really. So these people probably going to cost you more money, but down the road, you are 100% sure that you are working with professionals. All right, so that's what you absolutely need to consider. You also need to consider book designer, book cover designer, right? Because think about this way. Your book is your baby and it's these days your business card. So you want to have a professionally designed cover. There are many books that are not professionally designed and they just look awful. Even like if you publish, self-publish on Amazon, it gives you option to create your own cover. And I'm was like, wow, there are so, so many books out there low quality, you don't want to have your baby among those books. You want to really create product that is high quality. So you want to invest into book cover designer and before you do that you also want to hire a photographer especially when it comes to a book cover that is personal, maybe your picture, kind of like my book and here is why. I wasted so much time with my old pictures. I wanted to use one of my old pictures and these pictures were just not suitable for book cover. So it's easier if you right away hire a photographer who's gonna uh, create beautiful pictures for you, your 
book cover designer and then you're going to use this particular picture and give it to your book cover designer it's going to be faster and you're not going to waste time this way you're not going to make the same mistakes i made i had five different book cover designers again because i was stubborn and i did not want to do it right away um, so trust me it's not worth it you want to start from the very beginning and act like professional so you want to have a professional pictures taken you want to have book cover designer who is professional that being said there are all kinds of designers ranging prices ranging from five dollars to five hundred dollars or even one thousand dollars I'm not saying you should invest $1,000, but definitely don't just invest $5 because you want to make sure you are, again, working with someone who is designer, who is artist, who's going to help you produce professionally looking cover because trust me, the cover is also selling your book. So if you have cover that is not selling, you waste it all the time writing the manuscript and at the end of the day the book is not selling because of the wrong cover so again you want to hire professional or book cover designer specifically designing covers that is reasonable priced but not cheap right so think about that next time you are hiring your book cover designer next one you have to decide um, Actually, before you decide how you distribute your book, I want to talk about your rights, how to protect your rights. You got to register copyrights. It's very important to register your copyrights before you actually um, set up pre-orders and so on. So again, if you want to dig deeper, you want to learn more how to register copyright, you have to, you want to um, write, register for my upcoming workshop where I'm going to talk about how to do that. And also, uh, once you register your copyrights, um, I highly suggest that you actually also register you, your book with Library of Congress and you're going to receive the number. Let me see where is the number so I can give you the exact. Um, yeah, it's, it's called it's called LCCN. Look at here LCCN. And besides that, you want to obtain ISBN number, which I recommend to buy. Don't use the ISBN from Amazon because Amazon gives you free ISBN, but you can only use it um, within the Amazon distribution. You cannot use it outside of Amazon distribution. So for example, if you want your book to appear in Barnes & Noble, you want to have your own ISBN number. So you can buy ISBN number. Again, I'm going to be teaching how to do that uh, at my workshop. So you want to register below. Um, besides the ISBN number, you also want to register the BISEC codes. B-I-S-A-C codes. These are the identifiers that are part of every single book. Again, I'm talking about professionally written books. I'm not talking about those books that are just put a manuscript and they just upload to Amazon. This is professionally produced book that can be distributed worldwide, right? So you want to distribute book like that. And once you get the ISBN, usually it comes with the barcode as well, right? So it comes with the barcode. So you want to do that. You want to protect your rights. You want to I believe it costs $50 to get your copyright. It takes about between one to three months to get approved and register your copyright. So you wanna do that. You wanna register with Library of Congress. You wanna get the ISBN numbers, the identifiers and so on. And then you're ready to rock. The next thing is gonna be decide how you're going to publish. In other words, what distribution channel are you gonna use? Are you gonna do it through Amazon? Are you gonna do it through Ingram Spark, are you gonna do it through Lulu? There are, there are so many different ways you can publish book these days, right? Other distribution channels. I highly recommend to use combination of Ingram Spark. I use Ingram Spark because it can distribute worldwide and you can also use it for pre-orders. And then also Amazon because Amazon, as you know, it's probably one of the biggest platforms for books. So you do wanna have your book on Amazon. But don't just focus on Amazon. There is going to be another video that I'm going to be doing uh, where I'm going to talk about Amazon publishing pros and cons. So you do want to definitely watch that video where I'm going to talk about uh, mistakes with Amazon. Also, what uh, should you expect and my experience with Amazon, especially when it comes to um, the launching process. Um, so 
you're going to decide what distribution channel Ingram, Amazon, you can use Lulu and other platforms um, the frequently asked question is whether you should do the hybrid publishing model again I'm gonna do a separate video just on this topic so you can learn more so stay tuned for that video but if you decide to really self-publish highly recommend use Ingram Spark and Amazon both of these on top of that you can set up pre-orders which I highly recommend and you can do it through Amazon and you can also use the Smashwords for ebook distribution. That's going to distribute your ebook to different channels. And you can set up pre orders, which is amazing because you can drive pre orders, you can drive traffic. And guess what? The day when the book is released, all these pre orders will come towards your status, your best selling status. Now, note, I personally don't think that Amazon bestseller status means something these days. Especially there's so many books with this Amazon bestseller status. And think about it, like it's so easy to drive traffic and get, become Amazon bestseller, especially if you choose the category that is really um, easy to, to rank high in that particular category. And um, even if you do that, uh, that's not gonna, that's not gonna change anything for you because you know there are people who can rank very high very fast and they become Amazon bestsellers and they probably sold the total number of books maybe like 100 and that's it right so rather than focusing on acquiring the Amazon bestseller status focus on selling the books consistently all year round and really sharing the book with people who can potentially become your customers right because I mean I don't know what's your purpose why you're writing your book why you want to publish your book but the bottom line is that the book is going to help you to acquire customers leads to your business or to your funnel so you instead of focusing on some sort of status you want to rather focus on finding relevant readers people who can become your customers, people who can work with you and so on. So these are my tips guys. The next I'm going to talk about the pre-launch campaign which I think is important to set up especially when uh, it comes to uh, launching your book and I'm going to talk about the pre-launch campaign in my next video as well as the launch campaign and uh, these are going to be just basics and again if you like this topic you definitely want to register for my upcoming webinar where I'm going to be teaching um, the blueprint how you can self-publish your book as a professional in 2020 without publisher and you can register below this video and I also want to ask you to like this video if you do enjoy this video and share it and do not forget to subscribe and make sure to hit the bell button so you are notified next time I release the content and as I always say believe in you believe in your dreams you are absolutely worth it and stay tuned for my upcoming videos see ya